Today, we are going to tell you the truth about the Power Stroke diesel engine. In this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the workings of this engine that's found in most of the Super Duty pickup trucks from Ford Motor Company. Now, the first thing is the Power Stroke diesel has been around since 1994, and there's been a whole lot of different versions of that engine since then. So for this video and for the sake of being concise, uh, my goal is, is to cover the details of the most recent version, the high output 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel. But before we jump into the details, I need to make sure you actually know how a diesel engine actually works. So let's kind of cover some of the differences. And I'm gonna cover some differences between a gas engine and and a diesel engine, because I think a lot of people, they understand how gasoline engines work for the most part. The idea there is a gasoline engine has a spark plug. Diesels don't, they have a glow plug. And I'm gonna cover in detail what a glow plug is here in a second, so don't go anywhere. But the other thing is, is the gasoline engines, they have an air and a fuel that's mixed and then dropped into the engine. Diesel doesn't. Diesel has clean air that goes in. And then what happens is as this engine is rotating and that cylinder goes up, all of the air, that clean air gets compressed and it gets very, very hot. And so what happens is fuel at the perfect moment is dumped in and all of that heat and the pressure and the fuel that's vaporized ignites everything without a spark plug and without a spark. It's literally the heat and the pressure that causes the explosion. Because at the end of the day, an engine is really making power from one thing, an explosion, a controlled explosion. And so what happens is that gasoline, it makes explosions from spark plugs. Diesels make explosions from pressure and heat. Now, before we go any further in the video, I do need to let you know that we are giving away a Super Duty. And this one happens to be a diesel as well. In fact, it is that Super Duty right there. The cool part is if you use the link that's down below, it'll automatically apply an extra discount code automatically upon checkout. It'll save you some money as well. That's my way of saying thank you to you guys that are following us on our YouTube channel. So check that out. Now, with that being said, let's get back to the specifics of this 6.7 liter diesel and I want to dive into some nerdy stuff. So if you if you need some help, I'll have some time cards down below so you can kind of jump around to the topic that is interesting to you. But the overall architecture of that 6.7 liter diesel is going to be a 90 degree V8. Basically what that means is that you have your four cylinders over here, four cylinders over here, and it creates that V look to it. And what happens is yeah, that's 90 degrees. This I'm from Alabama, leave me alone. <laughs> Uh, so you got a 90 degree V8. That's basically the orientation of the pistons. Now you also have a singular turbocharger or, or turbo for short, that is helping to create more power. Now, in addition to that, you've got in block cams, uh, overhead valves. But one of my favorite features of this diesel engine is a CGI block, compacted graphite iron block. And you've also got some aluminum heads. Now the diesel that we're talking about here is a 6.7 liter. That's the size of the engine, uh, which by the way, if you didn't know, that's 406 cubic inches in case you are curious about that math, how that works out. Uh, but this particular engine, the high output version makes 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound feet of torque. Now this engine is actually biodiesel capable up to B20. What in the world is B20? What is biodiesel fuel? Basically, this is just an alternative fuel made from a mixture of basically modified vegetable oils and diesel fuel. And so what I'm trying to say that B20 is this engine is good for accepting up to 20% biodegradable biodiesel fuel. And at least 80% of that has got to be normal petroleum diesel. It's designed, I guess, to be renewable and better for the environment, all that kind of stuff. Who knows if it works or not? I'm not, that's not what this channel is all about, but here we go. <laughs> Let's change the subject before I get canceled and let's talk about turbochargers. So turbochargers or turbo for short is basically a way to cram more air into the motor. You think about it. We talked about it earlier is that an engine, all engines make more power by bigger controlled explosion, right? And so what a turbocharger does is it actually uses the exhaust gases that come out of the engine to spin a turbine. And that turbine is connected to a compressor on the other side that can suck fresh air in and then cram it into the motor. I know this sounds kind of complex and because it, it actually is, but it really is not 
that hard to understand once it's broken down. Basically what it boils down to is the turbo allows you to cram more air into the engine. The more air you can put, the more fuel you can put in there. The more fuel and air, the bigger the explosion. The bigger the explosion, the more horsepower and torque. That's literally how it works. So let's talk about one of the downsides of turboing a vehicle or turbocharging a vehicle, and that's turbo lag. Now, this is basically the time that it takes to get the turbocharger to spin up after that driver steps on the accelerator. You know, like in a big turbo car, you would smash down on that, that fuel and then that, that delay is turbo lag. So basically what it is, is the turbo is waiting for the exhaust gas to spin that turbine and drive the compressor to put more air into the engine. Uh, so the bigger the turbo, the more power you can make. The problem is, is that typically speaking, it takes that turbo longer to respond because it's trying to push more air. Now the 6.7 liter diesel actually uses a larger turbocharger and it actually accommodates a high airflow. So that more power, uh, it's gonna get you better acceleration when you're towing at high altitudes where the air is real thin. Uh, so that's a benefit to the turbocharger. But the 6.7 liter turbo response is actually going to be similar to a smaller twin turbo package. And I'm gonna cover why here in just a second, but basically what it does is it means it's cheaper because it's not it's not two turbochargers, but one, it's gonna be lighter because it's not two, it's one, it's less complex, and it's gonna create a whole lot less heat underneath your hood, which means that it should last a little bit longer. So I'm gonna cover a little bit more of that here in just a second, but I wanna talk for a minute about the high output power stroke upgrades. So for 23 and 24, they have the normal 6.7 diesel and they have the high output 6.7 diesel. So what are some of those upgrades that you get if you go with the high output version? Well, here are some of them. Number one, stainless steel exhaust studs, stainless steel exhaust manifolds, stainless steel up pipes, which I'll explain that here in a second as well. Uh, also, you get an upgraded turbocharger with uh, better cooling and better water cooled to compressor tubes. Uh, a lot of really, really cool technology. But keep in mind, from what I can tell, that the 6.7 normal and high output have the same internals, which tells you that this thing can handle some serious power. So I wanna talk about aluminum cylinder heads. This truck has got some very unique cylinder heads that allows for the air at the bottom of that head to actually get out. It's going to allow the exhaust gases to get out better, which means you can make more power, better fuel efficiency, all of that kind of stuff. In addition to that, you know, uh, in a lot of motors, they have what they call water jackets. Basically, this is a jacket that is wrapped around something to keep it cool. Oh, well, in the 6.7 liter diesel, they actually have dual water jackets, which is supposed to be better for cooling and for strength in general. Okay. I mentioned to you the CGI block earlier in the video, and I wanna kinda of step back to that for just a second. The compacted graphite iron block. This is a deep skirt engine block, and it's got aluminum cylinder heads. Basically what's gonna happen is because of this combination, the setup, it's gonna be much lighter, it's gonna be much more strong. I don't, stronger, stronger, strong. <laughs> It'll be better, mo, mo better. Uh, <laughs> And the other thing that I want to talk about shifting gears for a second is glow plugs. So we know that a diesel by now does not have a spark plug because it's the compression of the heat and the air to make that explosion. How do you get the vehicle started? Because if it's in rest and it's not, you have to get some, something has to happen. So what happens is, is you have a glow plug that goes into the cylinder that heats up that cylinder to actually start the vehicle, to start that initial combustion. And the cool thing is, is Ford is utilizing an instant start glow plug to help you start this new super duty diesel almost instantly in crazy level of, of temperatures whether you're way up north, negative 20 degrees or what have you. Now, I know I'm jumping all over the place and I apologize, but uh, I wanna talk about the pistons. There is a unique steel piston assembly that's designed for load bearing capability. Basically, it's designed for ridiculous amounts of weight for towing. It's going to be very, very strong. Also wanna talk about a stronger crankshaft. Uh, there is a fancy little polymer coating on the crankshaft on the main bearings to enhance the durability of the engine. It, you can tell Ford's not, they've done this before. So let's talk about the intake and exhaust for just a second. And that actually has a direct correlation to the turbo.
turbocharger and how we're able to reduce the turbo lag. So the cool part about this particular setup is that it has an inboard exhaust system. The exhaust manifolds are actually between the cylinder heads above the block, whereas on a normal gasoline vehicle, the exhaust manifolds are on the outside. Now, the reason that they want these inside of that V is because it allows for a single turbo to be mounted directly to the exhaust manifolds, but not just one of them, but both of them. And that basically means that you're gonna be able to get more power and less turbo lag because you're reducing the amount of distance that that exhaust has to travel before it hits the turbo, making less turbo lag. So the cool part is, is this is going to also reduce the amount of volume, the noise, vibration, and harshness inside of that engine bay. And it's also gonna reduce the heat inside the engine compartment because you don't have as many parts getting hot all the way through. So I think it's pretty cool. Now, when that air gets into that turbocharger, it's actually going into a Honeywell commercial truck turbo. Now, the benefits that Ford is touting on this is that it's got a tighter clearance and it also includes an electronic actuator. Uh, so for things like a variable nozzle design, it's going to help you deliver the maximum power quickly because it can actually change or vary as your uh, situation depends, like whether you're a low RPM or high RPM. And once again, I feel like I'm jumping all over the place, but I wanna jump back into fuel injection because you've got the air has gotta go in the motor, but also fuel's gotta go in the motor. Otherwise you don't make that bigger explosion for the more power. So what does Ford do on the fuel side? They have a high pressure common rail fuel injectors. These fuel injectors are good for 36,000 PSI. That is so much pressure, and that's a good thing, by the way. The more pressure, the more control you can have. And speaking of control, th those fuel injectors can spray up to eight times per stroke. By the way, a stroke is when that piston goes down and then up. It can do it eight times. So basically, you've got complete control. Uh, it's going to reduce the noise, and it should also help optimize the combustion, basically make more power in exactly when you need it to. Um, the other thing is, is it should uh, offer a quiet operation no matter what the RPM is. Ford is saying that this should have a similar audio, like from the outside of the, the vehicle, it should sound very similar to just like a normal gasoline engine. Now let's talk about engine exhaust braking. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It uses the engine's exhaust to help you brake the vehicle. Uh, so think about it this way. If you got a 20,000 pound trailer pushing you down this steep, steep decline, and you're just riding your normal brakes, it's going to wear those brakes out so fast. Uh, and it's gonna cost you a lot more money. So what happens is there's, there's three modes. You have on, off, and auto. And it basically adjusts the veins inside of the exhaust side of the turbo. And it creates a whole lot of engine back pressure to help create engine braking, slowing the whole system down and allowing you to use the engine to brake instead of just the mechanical brakes. And so it's a really, really good way to keep your brakes, your normal mechanical brakes from overheating and having a runaway truck situation on one of those steep hills. Now let's talk about engine cooling for a second. There's a lot going on here, a lot of heat, a lot of everything. So how do you keep that cool? Number one, a larger radiator. Uh, number two, you've got a massive water pump. This water pump in this truck can pump 125 gallons per minute as a flow rate just to keep the engine coolant circulating through the motor. That is a ridiculous amount <laughs> of flow. And uh, the, I was gonna say, speaking of flow, but this has absolutely nothing to do with flow, Let's talk about oil for a second. Ford is saying that they've got an optimized oil pan capacity that's good for a one year, 15,000 mile oil change intervals. I'm here to tell you, I don't recommend that. My Ford's engineers recommend it, so I have to recommend it, right? Because we're a Ford dealership, no, no shameless plug there. But I, I, the way that I look at things is the better and more you maintain something, the longer chance it has of lasting. It can't hurt you to change your oil change uh, more frequently. If I had one of these trucks, I'd do it every 5,000 miles. That way I could rotate my tires at the exact same time. That's my spiel. I'll get off my high horse now. Uh, <laughs> but how does Ford claim that they can do one year, 15,000 mile oil change intervals? By the way, that's up to is through their intelligent oil life monitoring system. Basically, there's a fancy algorithm in here that calculates the engine oil. It's got a bunch of sensors in it. It tells how you're towing with the vehicle or how you're driving it. And it basically provides the recommended service intervals uh, which will be less than that 15,000 miles. And here's what's crazy. If you don't do this, it can cause some serious problems for you. 
In fact, I'm going to quote this from Ford directly. Failure to perform scheduled maintenance as specified in the scheduled maintenance guide may invalidate your warranty coverage on parts affected by the lack of maintenance. Basically, if you don't change your oil like they tell you, no warranty for you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Comment down below and see what engine you want us to cover next. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Peace.